This is the Luckiest Golfer on Earth podcast, where we follow the journey of one man as he attempts to play America's 100 greatest golf courses in a single calendar year. Ted Fenton and Michael Higgins break down and plan the golfing adventure of a lifetime that is scheduled to tee off on January 1st, 2023. Each weekly episode takes you inside the ropes to America's 100 greatest golf courses. Please join us each week as we talk to head PGA professionals, industry leaders, and some of the luckiest golfers on earth. Let's join Teddy and Higgy now. Hi, folks. Welcome back to the Luckiest Golfer on Earth podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Teddy Fenton, joined here always with my good friend and podcast uh, partner, Mr. Michael Higgins. How you doing, Higgy? Teddy, I'm I'm doing great. I'm doing great. You know, this whole this whole journey we've we've talked about how we're we're going to go along with you on the journey to the top 100 golf courses. We're going to try to talk to the to the head PGA professionals at each one of these facilities. We're going to talk about the the uh, the facilities and 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 certainly how fortunate and lucky all those PGA professionals are to be you know the head golf professional director of golf at, at such an amazing amazing place. But throughout the journey, we also talked about how you know, in addition to luck in golf, right, getting that that bounce out of the out of the woods, hitting that spike mark while you're putting it, and it bounces into the hole. There's also so much luck in in life and outside of golf, and we wanted to bring on some folks to chat just uh, about being, you know, the luckiest humans on earth. In addition to being the luckiest golfers on earth, from time to time, uh, like today, we get lucky, um, and we are super lucky today because we got a really special guest. Um, we're like Mike said, we're not going to only just bring you the luckiest golfers on earth, but we're also going to introduce you to some of the luckiest people on the planet. Today, we are super excited to be talking with an incredibly talented actor, writer, and director on today's episode. And this guy has literally over 120 film and television credits that has spanned over 30 years on the silver screen, on the big screen and on the little screen. Many of you may remember him as Matt Parkman from the huge hit television show Heroes, or maybe from his time on Alias or Lost or Star Trek. And then maybe some of you even know him as Snap Wexley from the Star Wars movies. Please help me. Welcome to the show my good friend, Mr. Greg Runberg. How are you, Greg? Wow. Wow. Let's go back to my introduction. That was fantastic. <laughs> Jeez, man. It's all true. It's all I'm true. Standing, I'm, I'm, yeah, but I'm standing on the first tee. Uh, how long can a guy stand there? <laughs> it's it like, was it's a like reading all of uh, Tiger's events that he's won, right? Yeah, exactly. Oh, man. I'm so happy to be here, dude. Ted, you know how I feel about you. Iggy's okay. a good guy. No, I'm, I'm excited. I mean, I love what you guys are doing. I've... Um, it's funny. I just did a, a podcast called the F word or the other F word it's called. And it's all about, you know, turning failure into success. And you're not really, you're not really uh, doing anything unless you're trying to fail until so you're trying to, I love this. This is positive. This is luck. This is taking advantage of luck and it's golf, dude. I, I love golf. So I was like, yeah, I'm in, come on, let's go. That's Speaking of which, I, I I know, well, you and Higgy talked before I jumped in here and I heard, Higgy, what were you guys talking about? Well, you know, we wanted to talk about, look, it's so easy to connect with somebody if, if they're, they're two golfers, right? And you immediately become fast, fast friends. You talk about golf, you talk about family, right? And then you, you know, you're friends for life. So we started talking about golf. Hey, you, you play golf. He's like, not only do I play golf during the pandemic, you know, because there was nothing else you could do. We kind of manufactured a little bit of a golf course in our backyard, which I thought was really, really cool. Yeah. So I've got two college age uh, baseball players right now. And then I have an older son, too. Uh, but the co COVID brought everybody back to the house. Right. So, yeah. you know, they were going to school from one. One's in high school, to be honest. He's a senior in high school. But he's committed already to play baseball and the other one's a baseball player. But the, the seasons were shut down and the the players, the whole team was coming. We had this outdoor gym and, uh, you know, gym, whatever, just equipment and stuff. So they were coming over, working out. And my my uh, my son Ben was like, you know, we should we should build a golf course, and we we're, we're we have a uh, you know a, a decent sized backyard, but no nowhere near yeah. enough room for a golf course. I was like, what are you talking about? He goes, let me let me do something. So he goes back there, and we had firewood that I hadn't split yet. So we've got you know they're about yay high, this big around, and stumps, 
And he's like, I- I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do something. So I'm inside. I'm, I'm watching golf, right? I'm like, okay, yeah, just let me know. We're, we're out in the West Valley. It's hot outside. He goes out there and he puts stumps around the yard, nine of them. And he's like, and, and we go grab our clubs and we, we go out and he goes, okay, so here, here we go. And so now we've got this, it's 18 holes because if you get within one foot, your size foot of the, the stump, then it's it, you're in the hole. Mm-hmm. So you you basically chip and then you putt or you putt across the yard or whatever. And and then the we go around for nine. And then the back nine is, is is sort of this like crossing going from here to here. And then our last hole, which I was telling you before, was so great. We used to have this um in-ground trampoline. So it was right at grass level, was a trampoline. So there's a big, huge hole that's like 15 feet around and four feet deep. Now it's a fire pit. Uh, we used to have a trampoline in there when they were kids were younger. So that's our last hole. And you you tee off from close to the house and, and you can get a hole in one because it's such a giant hole. It's that's your, that's your signature hole on your course. Right? Exactly. That's our signature <laughs> hole. And it's been such a blast. Friends come over. We, we've kept it now. I mean, you know, COVID's a couple of years old. And now every time friends come over, every time we have a you know, family at the house or whatever, we go in the backyard and we play golf. It's, What's your longest hole, Greg? How, how far is the play? Oh, like 20 I mean, yards, 10, 15. No, yards. no, 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 no. We've got one. Uh, I'd say a good 80 yards, 80 plus. Come on. Oh, that's a full. Oh, yeah. Line. We're going all the way across. No, we have we have an acre. So, you know, we've got some we've got some property in the you know, but not I mean, huge, but still enough that you can you can definitely send one. We've got trees, though. So you really have to. It's it's interesting. It's like it's like laying up and really trying to, you know, trying to hit it on the green. Every shot is is that sort of pitch and putt kind of uh kind of feeling. I would bet the farm that in the last two years, your short game has gone through the roof. Yeah. There's no question. Uh, through the roof. You know, I'm not like you guys. I don't get to it. Hopefully not literally. Right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, to answer your question, Higgy, there's a couple of, uh, you know, like there'll be a tree that's on an angle or we have some steps that go down from the, from, you know, where our house is down to the backyard and the steps curve. So if the ball lands over here, the hole is around the corner. And instead of laying over there and then going there, I'll try and go over the steps, but they're steps, man. It's cement. So if you don't, if you don't get under it, yeah, boom, it ricochets. <laughs> so there is a little bit of that, you know. Um, it's just, it's just a blast, man. I love golf. The only time I get to play now is when I go to celebrity tournaments and I support friends. And so when you go out and there's a camera on you and you haven't played in a while, <laughs> it's a little, it's a little unnerving, but I don't even care. I mean, I I love, I just love being out there, especially with my my, you know, my boys who take it you know, obviously they're baseball players, so they're super competitive. And as we all know, a lot of baseball players also play golf. So it's, uh, yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's awesome. I mean, it, there, there's nothing better than being out on the golf course with your adult sons, hanging out like buddies and, and playing golf. I mean, nothing better, nothing. No, it's so great. My, my, my fondest memories are with my dad, you know, just going playing the Muni golf course and in, in the city and just having, uh, yeah. you know, making, making memories. And I'm sure you've got some great videos from, from the COVID days in your backyard bouncing off stumps. Yeah. And also yeah. like our pool is a little bit hot, like where the house is, we have like four steps down to the backyard. And of course, so we, we, you know, uh, we do the whole thing where it's like, you know, uh, uh, doing off, uh, you know, we announce <laughs> and we're up, up by the pool and we, we have this little sod thing. And so you have to tee off from there. Uh, and it's just awesome, man. It's so great. Let's just chat really quick about like what we, I mean, this is awesome. You've told me half a dozen tales in the, you know, 10, 15 years I've known you that are pretty incredible. I mean, you're, you know, you, you get calls from JJ Abrams, like, Hey, I can't send you a script, but you need to be in Turkey on this day. You're going to be in a star Wars movie. Like, that doesn't happen to everybody, dude. No, right? no, but it does happen to the life of an actor. I mean, I have to say, I, I put in my dues. I've, I've been working for a very, very long time. And and it's not just JJ. JJ and I have known each other since we were four. So you want to talk about stroke of luck um, career-wise. I say my relationship with JJ is a stroke of luck, friendship, brotherly, uh, support-wise. There's nobody more important in my life besides my family and and JJ's family, right? So when I was four, I met 
the, you know, this guy who I absolutely love the, the, the fact that he's one of the most prolific filmmakers and, and, you know, content makers and, and oh, we work together. That's genius level. It's like, it's icing on the cake though. Cause like, that's the, that's the least important that, you know, a part of my relationship with him, but they, that's incredible. The, you know, since you, you asked me about like luck and first, let me just comment on luck. Like, I think I, you know, Luck only happens because you put yourself in the situations where you could take advantage of a moment where it could go one way or the other. If you don't take advantage of situations, if you don't take chances on yourself, if you don't put yourself in those situations, you're never going to have the opportunity for luck to be on your side. It's just not going to happen. And there's just so many people that I see, um, and I'm and and I have experience, you know, obviously in my in my world where you, people would just sit, wait for the phone to ring, not go. My dad's always told me, always taught me, it, it, and it's it, way before Nike, was just go. Just go. Somebody says, hey, I'm out in 29 Palms, and uh, I just, I, you know, I want to get together and we'll talk about something. I go. I don't care if this guy, you know, if I'm on this level in my career and this guy's down here uh, and hasn't reached the level, and, and a lot of people, they're like, I don't want to reach down. I want to meet with people that are going to help me. It's bigger and better. People will switch, people switch places in life all the time. If that person's a good person, there's a reason why you and I have known each other for so long, Ted, and I'm not patting you on the back. I think it's like 15 years, dude. It's a a while. Yeah, dude. And it's like, and and it's because you're a good person. I like you. I want to be a part of anything that you're doing. And God bless you. No, I'm serious. It's just that, that way. So, so I'll get a call from somebody that I come out, you go out there. Now you meet them. And then who's this dude? I don't know, but I was in the situation to make that happen. Okay. So having said that, um, I, the, my, my biggest stroke of luck, one of my biggest strokes of luck was <clears throat> I was, um, and it's a personal thing. I've never even told this story before. Not a career thing. Nothing was um, I, I was doing, I was the very beginning of my career and not even a career. And I was doing a student film and I was way, and I was working uh, it was a camping thing, so I had to drive way out to Las uh, to the um, uh, like the forest area or whatever, and uh, campgrounds. And I was doing that, and then in the middle of that shoot, it was like three days. In the middle of that shoot, a friend of mine calls me up and goes, "Hey, let's go out to to this thing tonight. Get you out, whatever." I didn't have a girlfriend or anything at the time, and uh, so I so I went and I met I met this girl, and then there was a group of people and whatever, and then I forgot about it. the next day. I go out now. I'm really tired because I'm doing working and stuff. And my buddy calls me up and goes, one of the girls that met you, she really, she, she liked you. I'm like, I don't even remember who you're talking about. Anyway, her and another girl, they want to meet us at this place tonight uh, at uh, Trader Vic's in Beverly Hills and just meet us there. And I was like, oh, dude, I I, I'm not going to do, I can't do that. I, I'm just exhausted. He goes, come on, man, get out. He was my buddy, you know, uh, Steve Glasgow, who is no longer with us. The greatest, greatest guy. And he was like, come on, man, we're going we're to do this. He just fired me up. So I, I got dressed, whatever, went out and I'm sitting at this bar at this restaurant uh, called Tex. It was a Tex-Mex restaurant in the, in the bar area. And we're waiting for these girls and they stood me up. They stood us up. And while I'm standing there, I look over and in the bar was one of those huge barrels of peanuts in the corner, like literally just, you know, on, from the floor. And there's three guys and three girls. And I look and one of the girls, I look and I'm like, Oh my God. And I said to Steve, I said, that's Mrs. Grunberg right there. And he was like, I'll never forget. He goes, Stallion, go talk to her. <laughs> and I go, and I go, dude, it's a bar. I go, I'm not a bar guy. I can't, I just can't do it. You know, and remember, I'm working on a, a college student film just to get, and I'm not in college, just to get tape. You got to get back then, there were no cell phones or anything. Yeah. You had to get tape on yourself. So I'm like, whatever. And I'm like, no, oh, dude, I no, I can't, I don't have it, I don't have game, I don't have whatever. And he's like, all right. And we're standing there waiting for these girls to show up that never show up. Anyway, 10 minutes later, my buddy goes up to the bar to get something. Uh, and I'm nursing a diet Coke. Like I wasn't even drinking that night for some reason. I don't know. I was standing there and the girls leave. Now remember three and three. So they're hooked up. I'm not going to even go up and talk to a girl who's got, you know, talking to three other guys, yeah. the girls leave and and this one girl walks past the girl that I was looking at. She walks past. I look at her. She looks at me. And then I look and I just remember that thing where I was just like, man, that sucks. Like she's gone. Yeah. 
<laughs> but she looked at me. She definitely looked at me. And I look and my buddy's at the bar and he's talking to the bartender and the two of them are having a conversation. I was like, and I look out in the front of the restaurant and it was all glass. And I look out and the girl that I was looking at is standing now under a lamppost. And it was like, it was like this animated, you know, how the light just, you know, and she's just standing there. And I'm like, if that isn't okay. a sign, yeah, yeah, exactly. you know, that's like a moment you got to go. So I was like, and I just put my drink down, went out and it felt like a football field length. Cause I'm walking towards her <laughs> and I'm just like, Hey, yeah. <laughs> she sees me coming and I'm, and I'm walking towards her and she's just standing there and she has a little bit of a smile on her face. And I walk up and she's got her arms crossed like this. And I go, Hey, uh, I'm Greg. I saw you in there. And, um, I just had to come out and, and say hello. And she shakes my hand like this oh, right. <laughs> doesn't, even, <laughs> doesn't even unfold. Right. And I say, I saw you in there. And she said, yeah, I saw you too. And I'm like, hello. And I said, I said, I, uh, <laughs> the worst line ever. I said, uh, you really have a great look. Like, what am I, a modeling agent? <laughs> like, what the hell am I talking that, about? That, that's something you hear in Hollywood from yeah. time to time. Um, so, uh, so, so she, so we, we start talking. I said, look, I'm, I never really come to bars. She's like, well, then what the hell are you doing here? Like, didn't give me off the hook, nothing, but, but our conversation was good. She wasn't mean or anything. She was really sweet. And then her friends pull up in their car. So they were, they were, uh, consolidating cars to go to another location. Anyway, her friends pull up, uh, door opens, seat goes forward and they yell, come on, let's go. And it was Elizabeth, my wife that I'm talking to. And she, and, 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 um, and I go, Hey, I'm working here. I'm working here. And she laughs. And, and she goes, well, I said, look, just to be safe, let me give you my phone number. And if you feel comfortable, call me. And I was like, this is me, man. I'm not the guy who's like, Hey baby, let's. And, and so she goes, well, don't you want my number? And I was like, again, hello. So she, she gives me her number. By this time, my friend, Steve had come out, called the valet for our car. Our car gets pulled up. And I'm getting in our car. She gives me her number. And then she gets in her car. I get in our car. And then all of a sudden, she, th their car stops. And I'm explaining to Steve. I'm like, oh, my God, that girl is so great. She's so sweet. That's the girl you saw in there? Yeah. Oh, my God. Really? Mrs. Grumberg? I'm like, wow, whatever. Anyway, she gets out of the car. She runs over and she goes, it's a nine, not an eight. Sorry. That's my bar number. I usually give out fake number. You know, girls give out fake numbers. Wow. Yeah. One digit. And I would not have a beautiful family. I would not be married for 30 years this year. Oh, wow. wow. Yeah. Oh, so Congrats. I'm telling you, if that wasn't the lucky, I, I, I became the luckiest guy in the world that day that I was a play, at a place that I didn't want to be. I'm just, again, it just goes to this. And, and by the way, there've been plenty of opportunities where I've gone somewhere hoping that there would be some stroke of luck, hoping there's a... I'm going to schmooze and meet somebody and this and that, you know what I mean? You never know, but it doesn't, it doesn't amount to anything nine times out of 10, but there's that one time where just some, something happens, man. It's just, it's all meant to be. And, but you, you put yourself in that situation and you're ready. Okay. I'm rambling, but I'm gonna say one more, one more thing is I tell actors, like I, I speak to groups of actors. Sometimes I get asked and I tell people, I go, you know, um, you're never going to get this job never going to work. You're never going to work as an actor. You're never going to make money. Never, ever. Because if they push past that, then they'll be fine. You know, yeah. you've got to just believe in yourself and, and, and then those opportunities will be there for you to take advantage of. And 90% of the people don't even take advantage of the opportunities, the lucky opportunities that they get, you know? So it's, you know, I don't have to tell you. I mean, Ted, you're a hustler, man. You, 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 successful business guy. You, you just, you put yourself in those positions, you know, to to be yeah. successful. Yeah, it's the, well, it's it's the, it's the reps. The, the it's, more, it, the more, yeah. you put yourself in that opportunity. Yeah, that's exactly it. Add some excitement to your next charity, corporate, or even member guest golf event by including a hole in one prize on all of the par threes. Whether the prize is a new car, a golf vacation, cash, or even a new set of clubs, we have a prize option for every budget. So be sure to visit coasttocoastholeinone.com and have their friendly staff help you enhance your next event with Hole in One Insurance. Coast to Coast Hole in One has you covered from coast to coast. What you were talking about reminded me about one of maybe the greatest producers 
that ever walked the, the halls of Hollywood, so to speak, um, Mr. Robert Evans had that, that, that quote, you know, where uh, luck is where opportunity meets preparation. And that's exactly what you were describing. Yeah. And I, I can't thank you enough for, for coming on and, and sharing that, you know, that nugget of wisdom. It's so funny. What you just said now reminds me of where I was going, which is I tell actors, anybody, though, this applies to anything. You're in line. You're in line. We're all in line. And we want to get to the head of the line. We want to get to that door. We want to go through that door. We want to be, if you're, in, you're a baseball player, you want to get drafted. If you're, thing, you know, whatever, actor, you want to get that job. And you're waiting in line with all these other actors. Don't get out of line. Stay the longer you stay in line, right on, right the on. The better prepared advice. you're going to be. The, however long I'm standing in line, now I'm doing an audition and then I'm getting better, I'm getting better, I'm getting better. So ultimately, when you get there, it's not the way you want it to happen. Everybody wants it to happen overnight, but the longer it takes, the more prepared you are. That's the Robert Evans way, you know, statement right there. I mean, it's like anything else, you know, golf, baseball, sport, you know, anything. It's just, it's unbelievable. And you also, I mean, I was Joel Silver's driver. Talking about another successful producer. Wow, Hollywood. that's a legendary producer. Yeah, oh, that's I, I go on. That's a whole other episode. That guy is is brilliant, and I was his driver. All I'm saying is, I was around. There was a time when I was driving this SUV with Joel. Uh, no joke. Joel, Cindy Crawford, Madonna, Schwarzenegger, Stallone, uh, Bruce Willis, Demi Moore. Who else was in the car? It was like. Packed. How big is this car? Wow. How big is this car? Packed. It was an SUV. It was a big SUV. And, and we were all in the car and Madonna was playing her new music video. I had to go to uh, Becker Auto. Do you remember a place called Becker? Yeah, I do. I do. Yeah. yeah. It was like the place where all the stars got their stereos. I had to take the SUV there. I remember I was his driver. Take it there, get the best sound system, the best video, biggest video screen, which was about that big at the time, yeah. because she was going to play the, after an award show. I picked Joel up and they all got in the car because they wanted to see this new music video. Anyway, I would drive in. The, so when you're in those situations and you go, I could go off the cliff here and I'd get a, a much better opportunity in Hollywood. <laughs> like I was like, oh my God, this is everybody. And you realize they're all just real people, man. They're all yeah. scared of the they're next human job. Beings. They're human yeah. beings. And yeah. so, so the more you put yourself in situations, I, I guess my roundabout way of saying is the longer you're standing in that line, the, the more familiar you get, the more comfortable you get. So that I'm doing a huge documentary right now with a big baseball player. And it's, it's like, I never thought that I would be spending time with him and, and all the people that are speaking on his behalf and everything. And it's just like, Whatever. I, it, I, I was in the car with all these huge, you know what I mean? Like we all, we, we put people on pedestals. They're all human beings, dude. We're all just, sure. you know, they want to be treated like you human beings. Yes. You, you know, Greg, you talk about the line, right. And Teddy talked to me off the ledge a lot. Cause as you know, he, he's going on this, this quest, right. In 2023, he's going to try to play America's top 100 golf courses in, in one calendar year. And as awesome. far as we could find, no, no one's done it. One, one, one gentleman did it in 366 days. It took, took him yeah. one extra extra day. Wow. And, and Teddy keeps adding all of these challenges to himself that I keep trying to talk <laughs> him out of. He's, he's got to do it. He's, he's going to drive everywhere. He's not going to fly. He's going to be living out of an RV. He's going to walk every every golf course, um, you know, playing from the tips, hold everything out, has a he wants to have a camera crew following him. Wow. Right. And, and you bring into you know his 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 health. He's trying to raise money for charity along the way trying to raise a hundred thousand dollars next year which i think is is awesome and i keep and i and i'm the one i'm like the realist right i'm like okay. <laughs> thank god you're the realist <laughs> mike i need you buddy and i'm trying to call in all my favors for for um friends that i know that, that are golf professionals at the golf courses he's trying to play and who knows a member and how can we you know work these these numbers and and, and make it work and, and help them and i keep you know i'm like i'm like in my mind i'm like how are we going to do this I'm not even going on the journey with you, but I'm like, how are we going to do this? How are we going to make this, this, this happen? But you're, you're, you're so right. You got, you got to stick with it. You got to stay with it. You don't, don't listen to me, Ted. <laughs> no, I have to I just keep, you're, you're keep like a guiding it. force, you know, and, and that's just, it's, you're, you're, you're so right. Just stay the but, course. But, but, but what's going to come out of that journey is going to be incredible, man. 
absolutely incredible. I mean, I hope you guys are going to continue to do the podcast along the way. Obviously, oh, for that's, sure. yeah, absolutely. yeah, I mean, that's through, through, throughout the journey. We'll be yeah, that's obvious. I would, if I were you, I would talk to some people that have done some insane things like that. Um, that have made it through and done it. There's a guy because epilepsy is my big cause, right? I've got this new show called The Caregiver. Your um, your boy, your one of your boys has it, right? Yeah, our oldest boy has epilepsy. Yeah. Our oldest son. Um, he's a man. He's got you know he's doing well. Um, but there's a guy in the epilepsy world. His son has epilepsy, and he he has jogged marathons backwards, and he's done. Wow. Yeah. And more marathons, like you cannot believe it. And he, he's the backwards. If you look up backwards marathon, marathon guy or whatever, it's unbelievable. The stuff that what this guy has done wow. and or other people that have that have set off, you know, to walk across the country to do things like that. I'm telling you, it's 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 what it's happening on the caregiver series right now for me. I'm talking to other people and no two cases are the same. Like you're going to talk to somebody, you're going to be like, backwards i'm just playing golf like what are you talking yeah. about right okay. the cha- there's very similar challenges and you're going to learn you're going to glean something from from one of these people and go oh yes i i need extra batteries i need this whatever it is you know some little thing it it it, it cuz i really those are the moments that you remember man like what you're about to do dude is is that's what everybody wants to do they want i want to do something where i can look back and go man i did that <laughs> you know, and we don't, yeah. as we get older in life, we don't face challenges that like we get into a routine. It's, right. it's just, it's so awesome. Originally it was, you know, truth be known, kind of selfish. It was, you know, I'm, I'm realizing I'm getting weaker every year with this condition. And I was like, I, I got afraid. I was like, you know what? Maybe the dream is gone. Maybe I'm never, this is never going to happen. My golfing days are numbered. And it was in that moment where I was just like, you know what? if I'm going to do it, I got to do it now while I can still move my hands, play golf, walk the whole nine yards. If I wait to do it at 60 or 70, who knows? I mean, I may be fine, but I also may be in a wheelchair. So I just didn't want to roll the dice and take that chance. And, you know, I've always kind of lived a carpe diem type of lifestyle and, you know, um, that's how, that's what got me out to Hollywood to begin with, you know? So this is it. After I realized, like, uh, this isn't about Teddy anymore, you're going to have an opportunity to tell a lot of people about multifocal motor neuropathy, about GBS, about CIDP, and bring awareness to people that are dealing with that stuff. And and I should say that I'm, you know, one of the lucky ones. Like, when this first started, it, it was gnarly. Like, I was going paralyzed. They couldn't figure out what's going on. Um, it was scary. And then I got put on a medication and slowly over a number of years have been able to, you know, rebuild the atrophy muscle that fell apart and, you know, try to somewhat get my golf game back together. Yeah. At, at one point I was a really good player and then it was like, boom. And then I got this diagnosis and is seemingly overnight, like within an 18 month period, I went from you know, hitting the ball 305, 310 when I stepped on it to, I couldn't hit a drive 150 yards. Wow. You know, And it was just, if you can imagine being a scratch player and then not being able to hit a driver 150 yards, which meant my seven iron, I was hitting 90, a hundred yards. It was like, it felt like my whole world was falling apart. Yeah. Um, but then to snap out of it and realize like, Hey, you can either get busy living or get busy dying. Which way are you going to go? Yeah. And I'm getting busy living, you know, and that's one of the main reasons why I wanted to have you on as yeah. a guest, because like I said, you've shared with me so many stories, like, you know, throughout the years where it's just like, this guy has like an improbable life and an improbable tale. Like, and I'm so glad that you told the story about you and Elizabeth. I, w- I was expecting a story of you and Bradley Cooper and yeah. Lady Gaga on the set of A Star is Born. Yeah, or I mean, all, I, have, or I have all Spider-Track. that stuff. I have all that stuff. You know, it's like all that stuff. And people are like, God, you're so lucky. It's like, this is what I do for a living. They're lucky to have me in the movie. What are you talking about? Like, I, that, <laughs> right on, even, man. Right on. It's That's those it. moments, though, that that like what you're about to embark on. 
those are the moments that are important. Those are the moments that you remember that you affect other people. And like you said, it's bigger than you. Um, I have a couple of really good ideas for you. Uh, and it, really good. I, I need all the help I can get. And you okay, are an idea guy. So, so I've had this, I've had this website called talkaboutit.org for the last how many years to, you know, 20 years uh, to remove the stigma attached to epilepsy. Right. But now mm -hmm. it's, it's developed into so much bigger. Now I have all these celebrities and all these causes. I put celebrities together with causes together with pharma companies, together with uh, corporations, whatever um, to, 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 to help like something like this mission that you're this thing you're about to do. I have two guys working at the talk about a company and we need to get a pharma company behind you. I mean, this is really awesome what you're about to do. The idea is, you know, um, to rent an RV yeah. and I'm going to be in that RV for 365 days and nights, play America's 100 greatest courses in a single calendar year, starting yeah. January 1 through December 31st. In that year, there'll be no airplanes, no hotel rooms, no rental cars, no problem. No showers. The whole thing's, yeah. no showers. Well, no, I'm in, I'm in an I RV. So. I got a shower in there. Where are you starting your, where are you starting off? So the very first tea time is booked at Bandon Dunes in Bandon, Oregon. I have the very first tea time for 2023, the eight o'clock foursome on January 1, 2023. Wow. And right now it's just myself, Jake Sestero, the head PGA professional. We have two spots open. Um, and maybe if, well, We'll we'll see what happens. There there might be a, a Michael Higgins sighting at, at that. Yeah. Time. Well, does but Phil we'll, Knight we'll, we'll does see. Phil Knight play golf? He is really a good. rabid rabid golf fan. Okay. So and so we got to get Phil Knight to play golf with you and kick this off, and let's get Nike to sponsor part of this. Let's so go. be it. I that okay. So this is the conversation I've been hoping to have. Uh, with loads of people. And I'm yes. so delighted that it's happening with you. Yeah. Hey, Greg, I want our audience and listeners and viewers uh, to hear about the caregiver series. Yes. Yeah, so, so in the spirit of, of like what, you, what we're talking about, your amazing mission that you're setting off on, um, you know, turning uh, lemons into lemonade that everybody will benefit from, you know, through this this whole roller coaster of epilepsy from our son, you know, I've, I've really learned that there needs to be a voice out there. We need to normalize it. We need to con we need to talk um, because the more you talk to other people that are going through, you know, similar situations or dealing with something, the more you feel like you're not alone. And um, I've partnered with Jazz Pharmaceuticals. They're an incredible company. And they said, you know what? We need to embrace the caregiver. We need to take you know, a caregiver who's taking care of their son, just like you are. Um, and, and when I say taking care of, like my son's independent, he's, he's, a, he's a grown man, he's doing great, but you know, he's still my son and I care for him and, and we worry about him and everything. So if to meet another caregiver who's going through a rare form of epilepsy, and that's what we've done on this is I travel around the country and I meet other parents, other spouses, other brothers, sisters who are caring for somebody. And I take them out golfing, or I take them to, to, you know, look at vintage cars, or I take, I took this woman, Leslie to paint. She's always wanted to paint. These are things that we normally have put aside because we're dealing with these issues. And in that day or half a day that I spend with them, we talk about the condition. We talk about what's going on. We talk about the battles, the struggles, the the triumphs, the you know the good days, and we celebrate. And I'm learning from them. They're learning from me, and it's really just rewarding. It's therapeutic, and I, I encourage everyone to go to thecaregiverseries.com or search on YouTube uh, Caregiver Series and Greg Grunberg, and you really will enjoy it. We're doing a ton more. The ones out on right now are me and, and John, and uh, and he's a great guy. So I, I I can't thank you enough. I mean, this all really works together with with yeah. what you guys are doing, and and to be able to talk about this and share uh, and and you know point people in a direction. It's all about right now for me. It's all about rare conditions. They are not getting enough attention, and uh, and so that's what our mission has been. It's going to be for the next five years, I think. With uh, talk about it, my my you know my foundation. You know, uh, that's, that's amazing, Greg. My, um, my dad got uh, early onset de dementia in his, in his 50s and lived with it for over 14 years. And, mm. and watching my mother be a caregiver and age and what she went through and what our family went through and, and yeah. shedding some light on the, on the caregiver is, is so important because you, 
you know, when you, when you love someone so much, the, the last thing you're going to do is let them go through it alone. Right. And you're going to care for them and you're going to walk alongside yeah. their side through the whole process. And just to see how, how much weight is on a family, what that are, that are being a caregiver for someone yeah. with a disease. So kudos to you. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. And it's also the balance too. That's the other thing that I've learned. I mean, that we can go into a whole other thing on that, but I really stress how important it is to, you know, you, you can't help it, but all your energy goes to that one child. You have to spread it out. You have to make sure that you're still having a healthy relationship with your spouse or your whatever, and the other kids get attention. It's really, it's, it's very tricky. It's hard enough raising a family without issues. It's hard enough dealing with a, a normal relationship with when, when your when your father has dementia, your son has epilepsy. You have, you know, some a, a rare form of something that's degenerative, and you need to stay on top of it. It's tough, man. But, um, but yeah, I agree. The, the caregivers need attention. And so that that's what this is about. And I'm learning about the causes, the causes, the top. It's not, it, you know, I, I just spoke um, at comedy for a cure and I got on stage and, and, and the, the host was like, so why are you doing the caregiver? And I said, because yeah, Jake has seizures, but what about me? You know? <laughs> <laughs> and I could do that because it was comedy for a cure, but it's like, come on, man. It, you know, at the end of the day, if you can't find something to laugh about, you, you, you know, you need to, enjoy the little moments, you know, yeah. and, and that's what we're doing. That That's fantastic. So please visit uh, Greg's website and support that cause, uh, the caregiver series. Um, I, I can't wait to see how it all unfolds for you, Greg. And, and thank you for today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh my God. For- thank you guys. This is great. I'm definitely going to join you on this journey, Teddy. And, and I'm also, I'm going to help you guys you know, it, the least I can do is I'm going to blast out, you know, I, I reach a lot of people on social media. So whenever there's a milestone moment and you want to send them to, you know, uh, fundraising or whatever, I'm here for you. You know that. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Please join us um, next week and visit uh, luckiestgolferonearth.com uh, where you can sign up and join our email list and uh, be notified of everything Luckiest Golfer on Earth. Before we leave, I think I'm going to start a tradition on your show that I just thought of. Every guest needs to nominate someone else that they know has been lucky. And you can consider them. You can have them on or not. But there's a friend of mine. His name is Lucky. And he's won the lottery twice. Wow. Yes. And he is a great guy. We want to talk to that guy. We want to talk to that guy. Yeah, exactly. All right. I've done my part. All right. All right. So. Thanks, guys. uh, That's it for this week. God bless you, Greg. Thanks so much for showing up. Higgy, uh, we'll see you next week as always. And good night, good luck, and uh, God bless you all. Thank you so much for joining us for this episode of the Luckiest Golfer on Earth podcast. Please visit our website at luckiestgolferonearth.com and join our email list for all the latest exclusive updates and opportunities. We are working on a lot of fun surprises, and email subscribers will be the first to know. Have a great week, everyone, and may God bless all of you.